President Trump weighing in yesterday on the idea of trying different and already established drugs to combat COVID-19. We don't have time to go and say, gee, let's take a couple of years and test it out. And let's go and test with the test tubes and the laboratories. We don't have time. I'd love to do that. But we have people dying today. As we speak, there are people dying. If it works, that'd be great. If it doesn't work, we know for many years, malaria, it, it's incredible what it's done for malaria. It's incredible what it's done for lupus, but it doesn't kill people. Joining us right now is family physician, Dr. Jennifer Caudill. And Dr. Caudill, it's good to see you again this morning. Thanks very much for being here. What are your thoughts on hydroxychloroquine uh, mixed with the Z-Pack? This is what the president is talking about, that anti-malaria drug uh, seems to have promise, although there's debate about uh, producing enough of them to just make it available. Right. Um, so, you know, this has been in the news for a little while, and appropriately so, as potential uh, treatments for, you know, people who are sick with coronavirus. I, I first want to say that making assumptions that this drug combination or these drugs in the setting of coronavirus, uh, what do we have to lose or would, would, would be necessarily safe? Those are dangerous assumptions because we just don't know that yet. I am cautiously optimistic. I am hopeful just like everyone else. But I, as a physician, also know that we don't actually know if these drugs are going to work in this setting. And just because they're relatively, you know, they're used in other conditions doesn't mean that they won't have untowards uh, consequences in the context of COVID-19. There are potential side effects of these medications and we need to respect the medications and study them the best we can to understand really what the pros and the cons are. So I spoke with the FDA commissioner yesterday, Dr. Stephen Hahn, about this, about using plasma from coronavirus patients to make certain therapies. He's, of course, working on a vaccine at the FDA, but even more important over the near term are these therapies potentially a bridge to a vaccine. Watch what he said about this. Love to get your reaction. Close are you in terms of finding the proper prophylactics right now so that we can get a shot, get immunity for 60 to 90 days so that we can eventually open up the economy again, even if it's temporary? You're speaking about the hyperimmune globulin, where we can pull plasma from a lot of recovering patients, manufacture it, scale it up, and give it as a shot. It can work as a therapeutic, so as a treatment, potentially, and again, we have to study it, and we're doing this quickly. Uh, but also as a prophylactic. And that acts as a bridge to get us to a vaccine. How about that, Dr. Caudill, a prophylactic? So what we're talking about is the concept of convalescent plasma. This is, as he described, the idea of taking you know, plasma from people who have recovered from the condition, and that plasma likely will have their antibodies or their protection. We could then give it to other people who don't have the same protection, and it might help them fight off coronavirus. That is a concept and a technique that we've used in the past with other conditions uh, over the years. Uh, I think that it's a very promising uh, concept. It's a promising idea. As he mentioned, we do need to study it, but I think that it's a I, I think it's a definitely an option that we need to be considering, and I think we are. Tell us what you're expecting in this next two weeks, Dr. Caudill. I mean, obviously, we are talking about some positive developments here, but we also know that the president called this next two weeks horrific. Uh, Dr. Burke said that we should avoid going out to grocery stores even, and if you do, make sure you're completely covered with the mask and the gloves. What's your expectation for this next two weeks as we expect that perhaps we're nearing an apex of this? So my expectation is, is pretty much aligned with what we're being told by health care and our political officials. Um, you know, based on the modeling and different models that we've been shown, it does seem that around April 16th or somewhere in the next couple of weeks, give or take, you know, uh, that we are going to see a heightening of illness. The good thing is in the press conferences, we're often given, uh, you know, kind of trends to see what's happening on a state level uh, and on an individual level. And while the cases are rising in many places in our country, um, you know, in, in Washington, for example, I think Dr. Burks, you know, showed that. That was the yellow line that they've sort of had a little bit of a flattening of their curve, hopefully due to mitigation efforts. So my point being is, yeah, I do expect that it's going to get worse, just like it seems everyone else is. I do agree with Dr. Burks and, and what the guidance that they're giving us, which is that at this point, you know, this mitigation is the best we it, it's it's really everything right now. That means the social distancing. That means not going anywhere that you really, really, really don't have to go, like the grocery store or um, to get 
uh, prescriptions from the pharmacy uh, to wear masks. That is a new recommendation by the CDC that I agree with this idea of wearing cloth masks to potentially uh, curb asymptomatic spread. So, you know, yes, I agree with all of this stuff. And I think that we need to be heeding it and doing exactly what they're saying. All right, we will leave it there. Dr. Jennifer Caudill, good to see you this morning. Thanks very much.